Verse 20. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. In other words, the demands of righteousness didn't have any effect on you. You know, when you were the servant of sin, you weren't thinking about all the good things you could do. You were, you were serving yourself and you were you know, serving sin. But by analogy, uh, verse 21, first he says, What fruit did you have in those things whereof now you're ashamed? The end of those things is death. In other words, that life that you had before you were a Christian, what did it ever produce except for bad things? Verse 22, But now that you've been made free from sin and become the servants and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. In other words, the fruit that it produces now in your life is holy. Holiness is a fruit, a byproduct of the fact that we are free from sin and joined to Christ. Uh, it's not the thing that makes us join to Christ, but it's a byproduct of our union with Christ. And, uh, and what we're producing, what it's producing in us is uh, everlasting life. Verse 23, he sums up this way. This is such a good verse in verse 23. The wages of sin is death. Now, if we stop reading right there, we could consider the fact that no matter who we are, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If all have sinned, and that includes us, and the wages of sin is death, then if we get what's coming to us, if we get what we deserve from God, then uh, the only thing that we have coming to us and that we deserve and that we've earned is death. But notice the language that he uses next, but, the wages of sin is death, but, Listen, but means something else, something contrary. Uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now somebody might say, well, I hope I'm good enough to merit eternal life. Notice he didn't say if you're good enough and you merit eternal life. Did you notice the word gift is used? Now I don't know how, you, how, uh, how, how else you could look at it except to say that a gift is something that is, is freely given. If you have to work for it, if you have to pay for it, if you have to merit it, then it wasn't a gift. A gift is only a gift if it's freely given. A gift is given not because you deserve it, but because the person giving it is good. And then if you come back later and say, well, wait a minute, uh, I didn't like what you did with it, then it wasn't a gift. Uh, it, it would be like this, you know, if, uh, if um, well, let's just, uh, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think who I can pick on here. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's just say, I'll pick on Helen today. <laughs> I say if I if I said Helen, I, I know she's been walking all around the neighborhood here, and you don't have a car. I know she does have a car, but if I said this is just a made-up story, Helen, I'm going to give you my car, and it's a free gift, and here you go. And she says, "Whoa, thank you very much. That's nice." But then a week later, I come back and say, "Well, I don't like the way you've been driving. <laughs> I don't like how you've been, you know, uh, peeling out at the stop signs." <laughs> You know what I mean by that? If I came back and said, I don't like the way you've used my gift. I'm going to take it back. Well, guess what? It wasn't a gift in the first place, was it? No. It's not a gift unless it's freely given. And did you know that, that is the reason Paul uses this language with God and eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord? And, I, and the reason I said it that way is I want to establish uh, to you that the fact that uh, this fact that God has received us and has given us the gift of eternal life free of charge, with no strings attached, and he's not going to take it back. He's got no intention of taking it back. Even if we make a mistake, even if we do some things wrong, see, even if we fail in, in, in a hundred different ways. You know, the Old Testament tells us in the Psalms that his mercy endures forever. Paul tells us in Ephesians that he's rich in mercy. You know, what it means to be rich in mercy is you've got more than, more than is necessary. You see, only if we have that established in our minds do we understand and can we understand that we are perfectly secure in the grace that He has received us with. That's not good grammar. The grace with which we've been received, we're secure in that grace. He's taken hold on us and He's not intending to let go of us. And it's only when we understand and realize that degree of, of, uh, of safety that we have with Him that gives us the ability to stand up on our two feet as Christians and walk the way He wants us to walk because we, uh, because we're, we know that He's backing us up because He's holding on to us because He uh, has conveyed His love to us and we're secure in Him. Let's all stand up today.